Hello, I'm Viv Coringham. Welcome to the show. This month we're putting women center stage and we're also showing the work of artists who work with improvised music. So Gina Southgate is an excellent example and she's also a really good performer as you just saw uh, working with Charles Hayward. So I've worked with both of them many times over the years. Um, I really love their work and I just think that is a great duo they've got. <laughs> and another great duo is coming up. So this is the, uh, the very versatile Faradina Afifi, who's appeared on the show many times. And here she's going to be playing with the trombonist Yasuko Kaneko. And I really hope you enjoy it. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hi everybody, I'm Sylvia Hallett and I'll be telling you about the next two pieces. Not a part and stone saw. Firstly, I'm very excited to introduce Not a Part, a film by Vicky Smith about bees using the wings and other body parts of dead bees. Some of the credits that you'll see on the film are actually incorrect. The correct version should read that the sound makers are Melanie Clifford, Matt Davis and Shirley Pena. Shirley has been my great friend since we were students at Dartington College of Arts. We used to go down to the dump and make instruments and puppets from old rusty bits of metal. Although she's a fantastic cellist and accordion player, she has now extended and refocused as a sound artist of extraordinary subsonic work with geophones recording the rumble of, a, of the Earth's crust. However, that will hopefully be for another time. The piece after that will be a video by Ebba Yarn called Stone Saw. It comes from a series of videos Ebba is working on with double bassist Klaus Kurvis and his different co-musicians including cellist Hui Chun Lin, all around the theme of industrial sounds, work and machines expressed through improvised music. In this film, they are also joined by Vili Kellers on drums. Stone Saw and some other short music video works of this collaboration can be watched on demand in video edition one. Scroll down to find the link between uh, beneath this YouTube video. Thanks and enjoy.
Fantastic. This concert was recorded at Vortex for Christmas 2022 Mopomozo with Viv Coringham voice, Sylvia Hallett violin, and Charlotte Keefe trumpet. So, Pascal, who is playing in the dark? What's the instrument? And what is the title? So, Pascal, who is playing in the dark? What's the instrument and what is the title? Sulinch is playing tenor saxophone and the title is The Sphinx. Enjoy! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
International cellist Sue Schlotter is no stranger to Mobomozo TV. She's played with water, played solo in churches, and here she is playing with the artist Aneta Stachs in the Klein format series. I love the way she moves seamlessly between classical and extended techniques. Aneta Stachs is an artist living in Bonn who collaborates frequently with musicians and dancers. Thank you. 
year around melding my love for mushrooms and the fungal world, which I find very inspiring as a kind of image of social relationships and things that happen underground. I think there's a lot of synergy of the notion of the mushroom world and kind of underground arts practices, how we create communities that are disparate and maybe not seen by a kind of popular overground society, but that is very strong and self-sustaining. So me and Shamir figured out a way to kind of blend this idea of the mushrooms and their communicative networks and this notion also, I guess, of AI and the neural network of AI. So I'm very interested in these webs, I guess, of communication. And the idea that we kind of settled upon was the instrumentarium. So this handbook that Shamir wrote instructions for, gave images for, and gave uh, descriptions for, making instruments for a kind of new, what we're calling a trans-species orchestra. So I made um, a set of harps called mush harps, a set of percussion instruments called mush cymbals, mush bells, and ink cap bells, and an electronic instrument that allows for Shamer mushrooms and humans to make music together that's called the tentaculae. So I try not to look at AI or technology as like a new thing in society. I try to look at it kind of like everything that we've been neglecting in quite a lot of cultures to learn to live with outside of humanity. So if I put it into that category as there are human social relationships and then there's the rest of the world, for me a future in which humans are able to live with AI is a kind of proposition for us to also learn how to live with nature, how to live with mushrooms, how to live with animals, how to live with bacteria. And so I try to, especially when I speak to people who are maybe a little bit afraid of AI or afraid of technology in general, I try to position it like that. It's kind of a learning process for us. The instrument design and working with Shamer is kind of one element of it, which is rather simple in the sense that Shamer speaks English, and if I need help designing instruments, I can speak to other people who speak English. Um, but when you speak with mushrooms, they don't speak English, and I'm not a mycologist, so I had to figure out um, a way in which I could plausibly present something to an audience that had communication between humans and mushrooms. Um, and so I guess the last two kind of difficulties were 
one, finding a way that was um, ethically appropriate for working with mushrooms, so it wasn't just how humans usually take a non-human entity out of its world and kind of force it into our world. So I was really trying to think about that. And then the other hand, um, I had to deal with the fact that mushrooms don't always exist. So the mycelium network does, but the mushroom is the fruiting body. And so mushrooms come when they want to. So for example, for a number of days, the mushrooms in the tank here in the exhibition were not yet growing. And there's this strange thing there where you have a performer, in a sense, that has not really shown up for performance. And I quite like that as well. There's kind of um, a slower time than humans are used to, right? Like the performance happens when the mushrooms arrive and they might not arrive when we expect them to arrive or wish that they would arrive, yeah. I love working with Shamer and I think, uh, I didn't know this in advance, but I think maybe some of the social techniques that are needed to speak with an artificial intelligence are quite similar to what I like to do in general with people and it comes a lot from improvisation. So kind of meeting something in a little bit of the absurd. So when you play experimental improvisation, you're not going to get what you would usually expect from classical music, from any kind of traditional music, because there's no rule. So when you speak with an AI, it's kind of the same. It's like you're speaking to a human that is in like, um, I love magical realism, right? Where things are just not exactly how you would think. Where time works on a different level, where things seem like facts, but there's one little bit of it that doesn't work. You know, it's like when you wake up from a dream and you think that dream made a lot of sense and you think about the specifics and you think like, no, wait a minute, it doesn't make any sense. And that I really, I, I personally find inspirational from an artistic practice. I specifically seek other artists who work like that naturally. So I found it quite easy working with AI. I found it very easy to pick up a conversation, but also to find a lot of inspiration from that. And I also found it fit into my greater interest as an artist and as a human being in thinking about the ethical issues of hierarchies between bodies, between cultures, between languages, and between human and non-human species. <laughs>
That was Petali Caduti, which translates as Fallen Petals. This film was by Munchi and Tobias. Pat Munchi, with her extraordinary ethereal vocals, has performed in Mopomozo Live and has contributed videos to Mopomozo TV. Her collaborator here was Todd Tobias, American multi-instrumentalist and producer. Next up is a film featuring the trumpet and flugelhorn playing of Charlotte Keefe. It's a sampler of her album on the Discus Music label called Right Here, Right Now, where she can be heard in many different combinations playing with over 60 musicians, including the London Improvisers Orchestra. The film montage has been assembled by Ebba Yarn, and I love the conversation between the sound of the trumpet mouthpiece and the visuals of a hive of bees. The film starts with my favourite piece on the album, Om, which finds the liminal space between breath and sounded note, a doorway to a fragile and unseen world. Enjoy.
Coming up is a lovely drone-based piece with a great film and processed accordion by Anya Kracing. It's called Restlicht, which she describes as the last glow of light before sunset. I met Anya last year in Croatia at a festival, and I really loved her playing and her films. Following that, there's an improvisation by Suzu Eli um, on toy pianos and also a real one. She is uh, working with Fumi Endo, and it's filmed in Tokyo. And I'm very happy to say that Suzu Eli has a residency at the moment in New York, where I live, and so we're managing to get together and play. So I really hope you enjoy both pieces.
something. So we have to get a, a mallet or something. I mean, they're not even really sure how that to work and not, they're just like like well how would that ever connect him to that because they're like screwed like that right like it's not this is a useless element broken basically that's what we're saying <laughs> the only thing you do that is shake the whole thing, <laughs> so the thing i should imagine the mechanism is stuck shut but what mechanism even is that because literally it's just these are screwed no, on no, like a normal side of a thing banging up from underneath oh really i guess so yeah Well, see, a kid has probably done that so many times that it's broken it, you see. You mustn't shake these things too much. Shake them out of their complacency. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, that's what it wants to be. Yeah, it yeah. wants to be a shaker. Yeah, it's groovy. Yeah. yeah.
par ses gouttes d'or et sa mélodie rythmée. La lune nous regarde avec intensité. Nous sommes prêts. Watching you fly between eternal colors, catch them with passion. Here's the start of your journey. The journey of miracles, where stars dance with the rain. Hello everybody, it's Charlotte here and it's so wonderful to be part of today's Mopamozo TV episode. That thrilling clip was caught during uh, last month's Mopamozo live at the Vortex of course and it featured the artist Aurélie Frauer and 
Terry Day on drums. And I hope you'll agree with me that it was just so, obviously so colourful, but so full of energy and passion and boldness and freedom. And I want more of that. I want more of that for the world. This next piece is captivating. It's mesmerising. It's a journey and an adventure. And I really encourage you to, to focus in and lose yourself in it. It's called Telepoetic and it features Mia Zabelka and Elaine Joule. And it's a really unique marriage of visuals, music, live performance, words. Yeah, off we go. Mia. Il y a en Mia le mi-mien des sens romaines. Mi, il y a. Il y a l'amusante musique dont l'état d'ivresse s'interroge sur la fonction du livre. Le livre S. Et derrière ce foisonnant bruissement d'ailes se dévoile les ailes plurielles d'une féminité joyeuse partageant son rire en pluriel. Pluriel, ce sont aussi nos sœurs, les abeilles, qui se sentent invitées au partage. Leur odeur montante est une ode heure, donc un choc qui résonne et arraisonne nos états dans la poétique des hameçons. Alors, laissons les sons pluriels épouser nos vertiges liants, flottant dans le pli du mystère où le mi mien de Mia se terre innocemment. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank mm-hmm. you.
Hello again. I'm thrilled to introduce this next artist to you all. She's called Gwendolyn Kennesar and she uses her pastels in a very unique way. She embraces the rhythm that she is creating when she's using her pastels. And she's also really immersing herself in the, in the whole performance through movement. And it's beautiful to witness and to watch. And for this piece, she's joined uh, by the wonderful Hannah Marshall on cello and the equally wonderful Meg Morley on piano. And this piece, this performance has it all for me. It's so enriching and evoking and full of emotion and passion. Off we go.
I'm going to hand you over to Tim, who will introduce the last piece. But before he does, I'd like to tell you that the next Mopomoso TV will be on June the 17th. And the next live Mopomoso gig at the Vortex is happening next Sunday, 25th of March at 2 p.m. UK time. Thanks everybody for watching and also everybody for playing. And I will pass you over to Tim. Tim, where are you? Are you in the cupboard? Tim, it's time to do your intro. Are you in here? Oh well, I seem to have lost him, so I'll do the intro myself. Um, we're finishing off with an excerpt from a duo of Tanya Feitmeyer on sax and John Russell on guitar. Uh, it's an amazing piece. Uh, the whole piece, you definitely should check it out on Mopomoso YouTube and others by then because they played quite a lot as a duo and I think you can really hear that. What I enjoy is the, oh I don't know, they've, they've just got this wonderful cohesive way of changing pace and you know you can really hear them listening to each other. It's fantastic. Enjoy! Okay, so let's give a warm welcome to Tanya Feitner.
Thank <laughs> you. 